Hey guys, this is Colby. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to model the body armor for Clone Trooper inside Blender. Uh, last time we basically made the helmets, uh, but now we're going to continue with the rest of the body. It's pretty much from the neck and all the way down. So let's get started. So today we're just going to focus on the chest armor alone uh, rather than any other parts. And the next time we'll basically just cover the rest of the chest pieces or the back armor, etc. So starting off, I'm going to go to front view, press 1 on your numpad, press shift A. Uh, basically, I'm just going to use two image references, actually just one image reference that I've downloaded online. I'll include the link in the description below. Uh, keep in mind that it's not really a like, full-on reference, it's just more of a screenshot that someone took. Uh, but I think it's a good reference. So press shift A, image and reference, and it's like wherever you downloaded it. So I'm going to be using this because it has each view that I need. It has front view, side view, and back view, which is pretty much all that I need. So I'm going to move this pretty much to the side here, drag it on the right arrow, and just move it right in the center. So now I'm going to duplicate this image. So press Shift D to duplicate. I'll rotate it 90 degrees, RZ 90. Actually, I might do it 180. So RZ 180. Or negative 90 just depends i'm basically just trying to get this uh, view here to point this way let's just move it to the side here and we can move this pretty much to the back so pretty much we're just going to be working on this side alone let's go to side view and just make sure that this is pretty much aligned from the side we have it right in the center like this and same on this side as well uh, so now we're ready to start modeling. So let's create a plane. Let's shift A, mesh plane. Let's move it up a bit. And we're basically just going to move it to the center of the chest right here. So let's rotate it 90 degrees. Maybe like, maybe not 90, but like around 90 degrees. Maybe 80 degrees. Try to keep it at an angle. I'm going to start right here because this is the most flat part, the most smooth and easy to read. Let's go to our side view and do the same. So you pretty much click on this X button here, the red X, and just kind of move it. It's kind of hard to see, but it is there. There we go. Now let's go into edit mode on this plane here. Let's go into edit mode, press Control R, left click twice down the middle. I'm going to delete one face. Let's press this button here. Just like this face, press X to delete faces. Let's go back into object mode and let's add a modifier and turn on mirror modifier and turn on clipping as well. So basically now it's symmetrized across the other side so we can start pretty much working on both sides by only working on one so it saves us time. So let's just grab these vertices and move them into position. So this should be like right here. It should maybe like right here. Let's go to side view and match the reference. So these should be back a little bits. So move them on the y axis. And we grab this edge here and move it back a tad bit, like that. Just add a tiny curve. Right, basically, just matching it to the reference at this point. It's pretty simple. So grab vertices and edges and just kind of grab them into position. So now we're ready to start extruding to the side around the rib cage. So let's grab this edge, just press 2 on your keyboard. I'm going to go into front view, so on the uh, green Y, and press E to extrude. Just kind of move it to like right about maybe like the midpoint here. Let's grab this vertice and start creating a curve here. Let's go to side view, match to the reference. So just move it on the Y axis, get a nice curve. This should kind of be like under this uh, pec piece. Just like this. And we can keep extruding around the side. So now we're ready to start extruding around this side. Uh, it kind of gets a little confusing. So here it kind of rounds up. So we'll need to create two separate faces. Uh, so let's grab this face, press E to extrude. Right about here, let's move it on the y axis. 
So let's just straighten it out. So right now it's kind of uh, curved an angle. There's S and then Y and then zero. Now we're straightening it out perfectly. Let's move it right about here at the midpoints of the body. Uh, now we're going to create another edge loop right here and we're going to add a little bit of a curve to it. So let's press Control R on this face. Left click twice to move it uh, and place it down. We'll grab this face, this edge here. So make sure that you're in edge mode. Uh, on arrow tool and let's just grab this and move it out type bit. That'll create a nice roundness to the actual plates. Uh, so now it's a little bit too far out. We just need to move it back in a tad bit. So just make sure to match it to your reference here. Just grab these two, this edge here, move it in, and X axis and just kind of round it off. So it looks pretty good. Now I'm going to go back towards the center of the piece and we're going to start extruding up on this uh, check, this piece here. So right down the center of the chest. So here, let's just uh, create an edge. So select this edge here, press E to extrude. And move it right down the center. We move this edge inward and just match kind of this triangle section here. This is in between the two uh, pec pieces. So keep in mind that it's kind of under, so it's kind of hard to match the reference because it's kind of overlapping. It's hidden under this uh, piece here. So you kind of just have to guess and match to your reference. Uh, use your own judgment. Now let's go ahead and keep extruding upward. So grab this edge. And let's extrude between these pieces here. Let's press E to extrude. We'll create a long piece. Go to side view. Match to your reference. So move on the y axis under the plates here. Right about here. So now we're ready to go ahead and start extruding uh, again upward. So what I'm going to do is now that we have all these edges around this pretty much this chest piece, uh, we're going to hold down shift and alt and make sure that you're in edge mode first. So hold down shift and alt and select these entire uh, sections of these edges here. This entire row of edges on the inside. Let's press E to extrude and just move it outward a bit. So right here, just kind of move it to right here. So now we just need to match it to our reference. So these are a bit inward. This should be up. Let's grab these vertices. Press one on your keyboard and go to vertice mode and just match it to each of these four corners here. And just match it to your reference. And do the same for a side view. Some of these should actually be a bit further up. These should be a bit further. Here. Just match it to your reference. You can go into wireframe mode to see things a little better. Just press Z and then go to wireframe, or you can just press this button here to switch between the views. And just kind of uh, just alternate. And just move these all into position. So now we're ready to start filling the inside uh, and basically finish off pretty much the entire chest piece. So let's grab these two edges here. So actually what I did off screen was add an edge loop right down the middle here. So that way we can basically just uh, start, you know, merging the inside faces here. Let's press control R right down the middle, left click twice. Uh, basically I'm gonna grab these two edges in edge mode, press E to extrude. Let's move them all the way to the side here. And basically what we're going to do is I pretty much merge this face, this edge, to this vertice here. So press, select these two vertices in vertice mode. Press M to merge it last. I want to pretty much do the same for these two here. Let's so grab this vertice and this vertice. Hold down Shift and select both of them. Press M to merge it last. Same deal. Uh, so now we're going to add an edge loop right here and one right here. So that way we can basically merge these two vertices to this face. Let's so press Control R this one left click twice and basically just uh, move these two vertices together so grab this vertice and this one it's M to merge it last so let's also do the same right here so press ctrl R again left click and then it's just slide it into position and then grab these two vertices to merge it last and let's just grab these faces try to move them to a better good looking position so basically now we're going to go into side view and try to match it to our reference. 
make sure that all these faces are looking good. Uh, so if you move around, you might see that some faces are kind of like at an angle. Uh, so this should be a bit curved back. So just move these forward a bit. And just grab all these vertices and move them to a better position. Uh, if you ever get into kind of twisting like this, just, you know, kind of just edit the, tweak the position of some vertices. And try to undo the curve. Any kind of twisting involved. So there we go. Now we're ready to kind of start moving these vertices up. So grab this vertice and this one as well. And just move them too much to the top of the piece here. Uh, don't worry about it if it's too low poly. We'll add a subdivision surface modifier that will pretty much help uh, curve the uh, entire piece a bit better. Run these curved sections. So don't worry about that. Just make it low poly for now uh, to keep the things kind of simple, easier to work with. Uh, basically, just you know, tweak the position of things, match to your reference. Kind of use your judgment to fill in the blanks if there's ever a confusing part on your reference. Uh, same deal here. You can just add a edge loop to pretty much add a better curve. Let's grab these vertices, and I'm just going to move this into a better position. So we're nearly done with this entire video. Uh, pretty much just last couple things to note. Uh, if you're ever getting kind of twisting problems, or you see something like this, and the face is just kind of twisted, just you know, tweak the vertices and move them back. Try to mix everything kind of nice and flat and straight. If everything, if anything looks off, just you know, tweak the position of the vertices to fix it. Uh, so now we can go ahead and pretty much start working downward. At this point, I'd recommend pretty much going back into object mode and selecting the whole piece. Press Shift D to duplicate it. Uh, pretty much that's just a good way to save up backups in case you mess up the main piece. So that way you can have something to go back to in case you mess up. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but anyway, let's continue downward. Uh, pretty much start working on the lower half of this uh, piece. This last section here. So let's go into edit mode again. And let's select this bottom row of edges. So in edge mode, press shift alt and select this bottom row. Shift Alt, my bad. And press E to extrude again and just move it inward. Press S to scale it down. But mainly we're just going to move it inward and just tweak position again, kind of like we did for this. The same thing. Just move these on the inside. Just make sure to go to side view and do the same process. Get these edges and just move them inward a tad bit. Just like that. You see any like irregularities like this where you have a vertices sticking out you can just tweak it and make it sure that it matches just as long as it looks good so there we go so now we're nearly done with the video uh just the last couple of notes here uh pretty much the last thing we need to do is go back in object mode that is subdivision service modifier let's go back into edit mode and let's just sharpen up these corners here as you see it's a bit smooth to fix that, we just kind of add some edge loops around these uh, sharp points here. We'll add an edge loop right here, one right here. You can already see it's starting to sharpen it up. It looks better. Let's add one right here. And one over here as well. And another right there. If you ever see these lines here, uh, it's not that big of a deal. You can just separate the edges pretty easily. Grab, grab one of these edges, press G twice to edge slide. And just kind of spread them out a bit. It kind of dissipates that line a bit better. Same here. Just edge slide and just kind of move these down a bit and spread out the edges. Also do the same for vertices. If you know if you don't need a whole edge, you just need one points. Like this you can do the same process. Looks pretty good so far. Uh, let's also do the same up here. Set an edge loop to sharpen this area out. Just kind of create a nice curve. So it looks like this point needs to be a bit flatter. So to do that, we can just go to this. Add an edge loop. Right there. 
create a nice corner. And just spread out these edges to make them a bit less close together. Just trying to get rid of these lines here. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work too well. You have to kind of tweak the position of some vertices and just kind of make it look, disappear. It should be spread out. These should be a bit spread out as well up here. Yes, just spread them out as much as you can. Also do the same on this little corner here, it's a little sharp, let's make it a little bit smoother. A better. So now you can go back to object mode and just shade the whole thing smooth. So right click on it, shade smooth, so it'll look a lot better, it'll look a, bit, a lot more polished and nice looking. Uh, you can turn up the subdivision modifier as much as you want. I recommend keeping it around two or three. Adding like four or five is just a little unnecessary because it doesn't make a huge difference in the way it looks. Go down to one. There's a little difference there. It's up to you. Uh, if you just have too many vertices, it might slow down your computer quite a bit. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but now we're going to add a solidify modifier to the piece. Let's add some thickness to it. Sometimes solidify kind of does this weird puffy stuff where it kind of clips to itself. In that case, I recommend doing this. So go back into, I'm just get rid of the solidify modifier, go back into edit mode, press everything, so press A, press E to extrude, and just kind of move it inward. Scale inward on the X axis, so S and then X, and just kind of move it down. So that way you can move it inside without it clipping to itself right here. And just add a bit of thickness to the whole piece. And so now we're going to basically sharpen these edges here. Just press Control R on each side. And then there we go. Looks nice and smooth. Uh, if you get any kind of vertices that are sticking out like this, uh, pretty much from the inside, you can just go undo and make sure that you have these whole insides selected and just move them inward a bit, tad bits to get rid of those clipping problems. So I'm going to also add an edge loop right here and right here at the bottom. So there we go. I'd say this piece is pretty much done. Uh, pretty much completely finalized everything. In the future, we'll apply our modifiers, but for now, let's just basically keep the modifiers on. So that way we can make any kind of small adjustments that we need to uh, without having to pretty much edit everything manually already have the modifiers to help us out so we're basically still in the editing stage uh, i wouldn't recommend applying your modifiers until you're pretty much done with the entire model and you're ready to start texturing at that point you're pretty much ready to apply all your modifiers but for now just keep it on hey guys that's the end of this video uh, if you have any questions just leave a comment down below i'll try to answer them uh, and i'm sorry it's been a while since i made my last video uh, i've just been kind of taking a break and just figuring out what i wanted to do with my channel uh, pretty much my future content and it looks like most of y'all want to see uh, pretty much clone trip armor so i'll be making that for the next couple weeks uh, but anyways i hope you guys found this video useful and see you guys next time